Hey guys, it's Kodiak here, Raid Leader for Exile Power. Today, we'll be looking at the fourth encounter in the Tomb of Sargeras Raid, Mistress Sazine. Throughout this video, we'll be looking at the fight mechanics, your responsibilities as a DPS, tank, or healer, and discussing execution of the fight from various points of view. To navigate to a specific section of the video, please follow the section breakdown at the top of your screen. Mistress Sazine is a three-phase encounter that will test your raid's ability to handle adds, positioning, and coordination throughout each phase. Phase 1 will test your team's ability to deal with slicing tornadoes that move through the raid. Phase 2 will challenge your team's movement as a series of mini-boss abilities frequently occur. Phase 3 is the ultimate culmination of the fight and simply combines elements from phases 1 and 2 in an epic DPS race. Lust For maximum DPS potential, raids can lust at the beginning of the encounter. However, Phase 3 may be a better time for your team to lust. This will provide you with a substantial DPS boost during the hardest part of the encounter. Key Abilities Mistress Sazine's first major ability is called Burden of Pain. This applies a dot onto the current tank. While this debuff is active, any physical damage the affected tank takes will be shared to all players within the raid. Sazine's second major ability and the most important mechanic during Phase 1 is From the Abyss. Three Abyss Stalker adds will spawn from the boss. These adds must be tanked by the tank with Burden of Pain and placed in a strategic location in the room. When these adds die, they will leave a pool of concealing Merc on the ground. Players should avoid standing in the concealing Merc as it deals ticking damage and reduces a player's chance to hit. Throughout phases 1 and 3, Sazine will cast Slicing Tornado. These tornadoes will create a wall that will move linearly across the room. Tornadoes that hit concealing Merc will dissipate, leaving a path for raiders to move through. On normal difficulty, these tornadoes are significantly spaced out and don't pose a major threat to your team. Another one of Sazine's abilities is called Hydra Shot. This is a piercing projectile that's damage is split evenly between all players that are hit. Players hit by Hydra Shot will also receive a stackable dot called Hydra Acid. If a player is hit by multiple Hydra Shots, they will be stunned for 6 seconds. Immunity classes can soak a Hydra Shot solo. The final major mechanic in Phase 1 is called Consuming Hunger. Throughout the fight, a dot will appear on random raid members. To get rid of this dot, players must stand in a patch of Thundering Shock indicated by the non-targetable jellyfish. Thundering Shock will remove the debuff but spawn an interruptible murloc that must be killed quickly due to its annoying damaging ability, Water Blast. Phase 2 begins at 70% and features three prominent mini-bosses, each with their own set of unique abilities. Mistress will call Velius, a giant shark that casts Crashing Wave. This creates a large bubbling line that splits the room in half. Simply move away from the ground effect and find a safe place to stand during this ability. I'd like to note that the animation is absolutely awesome, so make sure you keep an eye out for it. Mistress will call her second henchman, Asanet, to the fight. He creates multiple patches of befouling ink around the room. Any players that come into contact with the ink will absorb it, taking a ticking dot and gain a 10 second debuff, reducing their movement speed. These inks should be avoided until Mistress uses her final ability, Call Seracool. Seracool is a giant whale shark that enters the edge of the encounter area. Players will begin to be pulled towards this mini-boss when he casts Devouring Maw. To end this effect, players must pick up the Befouling Ink and run it to Seracool in its outer ring. If players get too close to the mini-boss, they will be killed. When Mistress reaches 30%, she'll enter Phase 3, which combines abilities from Phases 1 and 2. No new abilities are added to the fight, and at this point, note that Thundering Shock does not occur in Phase 3, so players will continue to get Consuming Hunger. This will act as a pseudo-enrage. Tanks. Tanks with Burden of Pain should only be tanking the Abyss Stalkers, as their shadow melee damage does not trigger the debuff. Likewise, the Burden of Pain tank should never soak a Hydra Shot, as the damage will split amongst the raid. Tanks should position Abyss Stalkers in the center of the area, slightly spread apart to allow raiders a clean alley to dodge slicing tornadoes. In Phase 2, there are no specific tank mechanics, so handle raid-wide abilities appropriately. Phase 3 is just a rehash of Phases 1 and 2, so continue your tanking as such. Healers. Healers will have to deal with constant damage from Hydra Shock, Consuming Hunger, Thundering Shock, and occasionally raid members getting hit by Slicing Tornadoes. Make sure to dispel players caught in Thundering Shock patches to avoid the stun. In Phase 2, healers will need to focus on players taking ticking damage from Befouling Ink, as well as raid-wide damage going out during Devouring Maw. This is an optimal time for a healing cooldown. Phase 3 will test your team's healers' throughput, as your raid will be taking constant damage from abilities from both Phases 1 and 2. Due to the soft enrage mechanic of consuming hunger in Phase 3, healers will be pushed to the breaking point, and at some point, the raid will wipe. DPS 
In phase one, DPS are responsible for soaking Hydra Shot for their teammates. Make sure to avoid taking two shots in a row so that you don't get stunned for six seconds. If targeted with Consuming Hunger, make sure to knock the Murloc off your back by standing in Thundering Shock. Nuke down the Murloc Wave Runner as soon as possible. In phase two, the main DPS responsibility is bringing the Befouling Ink to Seracool during his Devouring Maw. Classes with mobility are best suited for this mechanic, but any class will do. Phase 3 is a combination of abilities from Phases 1 and 2, and responsibilities remain largely the same. Help kill Abyss Stalkers, bring Befouling Ink to Seracool, and avoid Tornado damage to keep the healers happy. Positioning Phase 1 positioning for this boss is relatively straightforward. Tank Mistress slightly off-center of the encounter area. When she casts from the Abyss, move the three adds to the center of the room. When the boss casts Hydra Shot, make sure the targeted players are spaced out and stay put. The last thing you'll want is multiple Hydra Shots stacked on top of another, hitting people multiple times. Phase 2 positioning is all dependent on which mini boss the boss is calling. Tanks will have to move Mistress when she casts Call Velius. When Velius has done his Crashing Wave ability, simply move the boss back towards the center of the room. This will prepare you for Befouling Ink and Devouring Maw. Phase 3 will require constant movement based on a series of abilities. You'll have to position Abyss Adds properly to disrupt Slicing Tornadoes, as well as move the boss to avoid crashing waves. The micro-movement is frustrating, but essential to surviving. Heroic Changes On Heroic, the Abyss Stalker Adds have an interruptible teleport ability called Dark Depths. They will teleport to a random raid member and hit them with a burst of shadow damage, as well as apply a dot. Tanks will have to do their best to keep these adds under control and properly position them for slicing tornadoes. Raiders can stun these adds as they approach zero health to keep them in place. On heroic difficulty, Mistress Sazine's Hydra Shot will also target more than one raider. Players that are targeted will have to adjust accordingly, and the raid will have to manage soaking the shots of each player targeted. Final Notes this is the first real challenge of Tomb of Sargeras that will test your team's ability to move, communicate, and execute a series of overlapping mechanics. Hydrosaut and Slicing Tornado present a serious challenge on Heroic, but if you understand the mechanics and prioritize your actions, you will defeat Mistress Sazine. If you have any questions about this encounter, please leave them in the comments section below. We'd be happy to help you with any issues your team may be having on this fight. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you've liked this video, please consider giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. That's all for this video. We'll see you next time.